Hello and welcome back to Research and Innovation Days 2020. Before we get to our next sessions, I'd like to give you a backstage look at some of these TV studios. We've got five TV studios here at DG Research and Innovation here uh, in Brussels. There's one here to my right, one to my left. There are three more in the back, and that's where it's all happening. That is how we're pulling off these plenaries, these hubs, all at the same time. That's how it's happening. It's really a buzzing beehive going on here. And you wonder, some of you have been asking uh, on the uh, chat room that how uh, is this, what kind of a footprint, carbon footprint do we have here uh, doing this? Well, compared to last year, not many people are flying in, so there's, there's one part of the footprint. We're going to calculate that and let you know uh, at the end of the conference. In any case, what we do do here is any of these building materials are used as recycling uh, uh, materials. That's following that sort of mantra of the three R's, recyclable, re reusable, repairable. Uh, and you ask about the participants. We got some 30 thousand people who are connected with this event from more than a hundred countries. That shows you the global reach. What's happening this hour? We're going to be talking about the new European research area to promote more international participation. We're going to have some officials from the European uh, Council, a European Commission, as well as national governments, because you got to all be on board for this international cooperation, this European research area to work. And we have hubs on climate, energy, COVID-19, regulatory barriers. So, oh, and Use the hashtag RIDaysEU if you got anything to say. We'll be back. Stay tuned. Hasta luego. A plus tard. The new European research area. Working together to make Europe a lighthouse of excellence for research and innovation to deliver a green, digital and healthy future and well-being for Europe, to prioritize investments in research and innovation, to use the power of science and innovation to support Europe's recovery and provide a balance between society, individual and the planet. You will be able to access the best universities and research institutions, do research in excellent facilities and ecosystems, Establish partnership between research community, business, industry, society and all partners to transform your ideas into new products and jobs and make a change. Develop new skills and have an attractive career. Share knowledge, science data and results and promote trust of citizens. The new European research area will be the place to promote common European values and academic freedom spread excellence across Europe, encourage gender equality, boost competitiveness and leadership in the world, attract young talents and do science together. The new European research area is for you. Welcome. Welcome to this session on the European Research Area. Maria Gabriel just told us what this is about. The European Research Area is for you, for you researchers, for you universities, for you research organizations, for you ministers, for you members of the Committee of the Regions, and for you citizens. And the session today is to explore together how this European research area, which is a bit more than 20 years old, can be brought to the next level. We will explore this with the Committee of the Region, with ministers. Welcome um, to the President of uh, the Committee of the Region, Apostolos Tsitsikostas. Welcome. Welcome also to Marco Makula, the Vice President. Manuel uh, Heitor, I'm delighted um, to see you. Minister Kostas, welcome as well. Uh, to explore how the European research area is about what is happening in 27 member states and how EU institutions, starting with the European Commission, Maria and you, are bringing it all together. Over to you. Thank you very much, Jean-Éric. Welcome. Dear Apostolos, uh, Mr. Marcula, dear Minister, Ma dear Manuel, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to be here to be, be together with you. 
This is one of the most important sessions during our Research Innovation Days and I must say at the beginning that this topic is particularly close to my heart and that's why it's a great pleasure to have you and to have this opportunity to exchange what's about the new European research area, what are the challenges, what are our assets and how together we can improve the actual situation. So I would like to say at the beginning that over the years science has evolved to allow us to enjoy a wealth of knowledge in many areas. And we all know how important it is that we were able to apply knowledge and have greater impact on so much things. Diagnosis of diseases, production of energy, understanding the role of forests or oceans, all these topics are very well represented during our research innovation days. And even the last example during the COVID-19 crisis, we have seen how science is at the forefront, not only to tackle the challenge and the crisis, but to overcome and to propose solutions. And I'm very glad that since the beginning in our coordinated answer our response to the crisis, we were here together with our researchers, with our talents, with our innovators. Now, we can really not abstract from the critical period we are living, because the COVID-19 pandemic hit very hard the European economy, calling for an ambitious recovery that Europe will implement before 2023. And let me share here some thoughts about the need and timeliness of a renewed European research area. First, an area not made of a set of closed territories. An area embracing all of Europe because knowledge has no territorial boundaries, because scientific knowledge grows with collaborations. It is trusted if there is scrutiny of its quality. And it has also more chances to achieve peaks of excellence when it has access to the best infrastructures and instruments. An area of discovery that at the same time produce tangible knowledge with real impact on our economies and societies. And I would like here to highlight three issues. The first is about three I, ideas, infrastructures and impact. They are essential for Europe to invent its sustainable future. They require a collective effort, what we are doing here during the entire period of our r days, to increase and align investments necessary to support the emergence of new ideas that allow Europe to lead in advanced fields of science. Development of research infrastructures, some of which are unique and requiring investments beyond the capacity of a single member state. And these investments should feed into innovations with impact on our economies and societies. The second is about 3P, people, planet and prosperity, based on digital technologies. Our researchers, women and men in equal terms, it's something important for me too, who need to have incentives to pursue careers in universities or industry with opportunities to develop their potential in their regions and be part of pan-European networks. They should have opportunities to move within the European space and have access to the best infrastructures for their work. And it is also about ensuring science returns the investment to European prosperity in particular in times of green and digital transitions with strong impact on our planet, societies and economies. And for that, we need strong commitment of research organizations, universities, of industry and a better coordination at regional, national and European level. And the third is about 3C, curiosity, citizens and collaborations essential ingredients of the extended knowledge networks that Europe needs to widen and deepen research collaborations. An important trigger of the scientific effort is curiosity. Scientific ideas emerge from asking good questions, from the attraction to know more about the world surrounding us. And citizens can share and contribute to the scientific process. 
all Europeans and the younger generations in particular can be inspired by ambitions for new discoveries, join the ranks of scientists and engineers in far great numbers. However, today the risk is that European citizens feel increasingly distrustful and isolated from science. There is now new tendency, and we have seen that the last five months. Here, we need to tackle this together, all of you. And with the European education area, the European research area can effectively transform the transformation of higher education institutions to boost the interaction between education, research and innovation to empower Europe's citizens and contribute to a resilient and cohesive European society. And to achieve excellent results, researchers cannot work anymore in isolation. We live in times when scientific activities require faster and effective collaborations. Without infrastructures and world-class research facilities, it will be very difficult to produce excellent results. So let me to conclude. Europe faces a redefining moment. The European Commission, Member States, the RNI stakeholders have an important role to play at this crucial moment to ensure a forward-looking recovery responding to people's need. European resilience, based on a greener, digitally empowered, competitive and more sustainable union with novel ways to engage with citizens, like we are doing that with our missions, require joint efforts and global leadership in science and innovation. And the European Union, I'm fully convinced, can make a real difference the real difference by supporting the establishment of the European research area in order to increase the effectiveness, consistency and overall performance of the European research and innovation ecosystem. And with the proposed policy actions in the forthcoming communication, the European Union has an opportunity to move forward, aligning priorities, setting objectives and targets as well as the programs and instruments to implement and achieve them. Europe has powerful instruments in Horizon Europe and the next generation EU that are catalyzers of national and regional programs, and I hope that the minister will confirm that. But let us now pass quickly to actions. That's my message today. Thank you. Maria, thank you very much. It's more than that. It's you have really shared with us your vision for this European research area. You want action, you're bringing your energy and your ambition to it. And thank you for, for laying it out. Um, I must say, even if I'm, of course, involved in the preparation of the communication on the European research area, and I'm now even more looking forward to have it um, uh, available in, in the next few days, as you said. Mr. Uh, Commissioner, you, 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 you always, when, when you took over your portfolio, you told us, Yes, the European research area, it's member states. We'll, we will hear ministers in a moment. But you also told us this is largely happening at regional level. This is where you have these centers of excellence, where you have ecosystems. And you wanted this partnership with the Committee of the Regions, and this is why I'm really delighted uh, to be able to welcome the president of the Committee of the Region, Mr. Apollos Tsitsikostas. The floor is yours. Good evening. It's a great pleasure to be here. Hello. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Gabriel, uh, Minister Kalicek, uh, Director General Packet, and ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be here as President of the European Committee of the Regions and Governor of the region of Central Macedonia in Greece. It definitely gives me a great pleasure to take part in the second edition of the flagship conference on the, of the European Commission on the European Research and Innovation Days. Now, a week from now, we expect the European Commission to adopt the long-awaited European Research Area Communication. I know that this is also a high priority for the German Presidency, but it is equally a key priority for all of us, working and implementing EU policies at the local and regional level. I hope that you would agree that neither the Green Deal nor the digital transformation nor the next generation EU 
but even less so, the renewed European research area could take place without the participation of local and regional authorities in Europe. And I'm glad that Commissioner Gabriel uh, was very, very uh, explicit on this uh, in this way. There are almost one million elected local representatives in the member states who strive on a daily basis to successfully carry out European and national projects, including in the field of research and innovation. Here, my colleagues, Ms. Kalicek and Mr. Markula, would certainly point to the fact that education and research are very often seen as a regional competence, both the URE and de facto in many member states. And I would also like to directly give credit to Commissioner Gabriel that she already thinks a few steps ahead and thus actively supports the synergies between the European education area and the European research area, both close to our heart as local politicians. Now, in view of this, I'm really happy to declare that mine and the Commissioner's cabinets are at the final staging stages of elaborating a joint action plan between the Committee of the Regions and Ms. Gabriel Services. This document will give a clear guidance to our many cooperative efforts, while at the same time it will provide a territorial dimension and added legitimacy to the EC initiatives in the field. Ladies and gentlemen, during my interactions with the EU and Greek officials dealing with research and innovation programs, I have always highlighted a number of key priorities. Go local, be concrete, simplify things. The topic of today's panel towards a new European research area has been at the center of many, many recent Committee of the Regions opinions. We have always insisted that regional ecosystems are indispensable for a revamped era. However, these are grown bottom up and over a considerable period of time with all stakeholders. Such ecosystems need considerable resources, hence a targeted support from both the EU and the national funds with the active participation of our regions, universities and SMEs. Pan-European networks of regional innovators should be financed via the EU programs, similar to the newly created European Innovation Council and the European Institute of Technology. That is why I strongly support the creation of ERA hubs, joining in the footsteps of the digital innovation hubs, having been started by Commissioner Gabriel in her former role as Digital Commissioner. And of course, there are other promising initiatives that I'm really looking forward to be mentioned in the forthcoming communication, such as the access to research results and open science, the building of transborder and cross-regional research infrastructures, including digital and supercomputer ones. Thirdly, using public and regional data as open source for startups. And fourth, gradually including our companies and citizens into the governance and dissemination of results of the next framework program. So in this respect, I would like to highlight the excellent inter-institutional cooperation that we have with your DG, the Knowledge Exchange Platform, a very popular initiative among our members in all regions and cities around Europe. Equally relevant for the regional dimension of ERA is the Science Meets Regional Trilateral Initiative between the Committee of the Regions, the European Commission and the European Parliament. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to make three final additional observations related to the still very difficult economic and demographic uh, situation in our regions and cities, 
also due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. No EU region and innovation ecosystem should be left behind. We should look for specific additional instruments at the European, national and local level to tackle brain drain and the exodus of researchers and valuable specialists. And based on our previous experience with the 2000-2013 crisis, we should also consider growing our innovation system's resilience to future social and economic upheavals. This could, for instance, be done in parallel to a new generation of smart specialization strategies needed for the intelligent and competitive growth of our regions and cities. Let me repeat that at the European Committee of the Regions, we stand ready to support the European Commission to go local and communicate better its research results and achievements by associating our members and the regions. Finally, we also look forward to the creation of a network of ERA hubs. The policy support facility could be refocused from national to regional and local levels. Many of our members and local authorities expressed a clear wish for a commission-driven screening of the local innovation systems, particularly at the onset of the 2021-27 research and uh, innovation program. Our barometer of regions and cities to be published at the October plenary session in a couple of weeks has also called to adopt concrete measures to prevent the fragmentation of recovery investments by prioritizing innovation and transformation investment in the member states and regions according to their competitive strengths. Ultimately, we are open to political cooperation between the Council and the TRIO presidency to improve the implementation of the ERI priorities and Horizon Europe in general. So to conclude, I would like to take this opportunity to invite Commissioner Gabriel, one of the best commissioners that we have in the European Union, I would say the perfect person for the right position, to join one of our next plenaries to continue these discussions with our members. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, President Titi Costas. Thank you very much for, for your commitment as well. Uh, Maria, you, you were confirming uh, that you, you, you would be keen to do that. And uh, I think I retain, be uh, concrete, be simple. I think that we can do. Go local is much more difficult. And this is where I think teaming up with the Committee of the Region is, is going to be absolutely essential. The European research area is also very much and essentially you member states. Uh, the European research area is not abstract. It's 27 research and innovation systems which are living, which are developing, which sometimes need to be made more resilient, are sometimes struggling. And all 27 ministers are investing in having better research and innovation system. And we hope to, in the European research area, pull it together if I can put it in these terms. I don't think we could have had um, a better partner as Commission, Marie. I don't think you could have, have better partners than the ministers from the TRIO presidency because the ambitious uh, nature of their common agenda is going to drive the European research area forward um, in, I'm expecting, a particularly powerful way. I think we, we, we will now listen to, to the ministers. We will start with um, Minister Anja Karniczek as the uh, president in office and then turn to the ministers which are present with us. We have a video from Minister Karliczek. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the main objectives of our presidency of the Council of the European Union is to make the European research area more effective and more dynamic. A strong and future-oriented European research area is at the heart of European research policy. It ensures that Europe can maintain its prosperity in the future. We have achieved a great deal in the last 20 years. We have created better links to the EU funding measures at a transnational, national and regional level. We have improved coordination among our research systems 
and have made the exchange between researchers across national borders easier. But that alone is not enough. I believe it is important that we also better cooperate and coordinate our thematic priorities, from key technologies to social science and humanities. This will allow us to make cooperation quicker and more intelligent and more agile. We must achieve technological sovereignty in Europe. Only those countries that achieve technological sovereignty can take sovereign decisions to find the best and the most sustainable solutions. This also requires comprehensive digital education across Europe. That is why I have made this topic a priority of the German Council Presidency. It will help us to effectively transfer scientific findings and innovations to society. We are also faced with challenges that no country can master on its own. For example, in the field of climate change. Across the globe, there is a need for climate-friendly technologies. By investing in climate-friendly technologies today, we will contribute to solving a global challenge that concerns a whole generation and to ensuring that Europe identifies new potential of value creation in the face of international competition. Each member state alone is too small to cope with these important tasks on its own. We need to address climate change globally. We are investing in climate-friendly technologies for the benefit of today's society and of future generations. I believe that the green hydrogen has tremendous potential International cooperation, for example, with African countries can help us to find, to achieve our objectives much better. In particular, we want to launch a research and innovation initiative on the commercial use and production of green hydrogen. Green hydrogen is a key energy resource of the future. Without its widespread use, it will be especially difficult to keep heavy industry in Europe. We will therefore cooperate closely with the European Commission to address this issue. Now it's the moment to link the various aspects of the sustainable, affordable and secure energy supply. This requires the close cooperation of policymakers, industry and science. Independent basic research constantly provides us with new findings which we can put to use for progress and innovation. This is why freedom of research is so important to me. It is in our best interests to guarantee this freedom. This is why we will put freedom of research on the agenda of the next conference of research ministers in October. In a well-connected research area, we are able to use all the resources available to us. The knowledge of our citizens is one of such resources. Making people's knowledge available for science and enabling participation in research is an asset for our societies. The initiative Plastic Pirates Go Europe of our Trio Council Presidency is a great example of this. Children and young people are supporting the scientific community in analyzing plastic pollution in our lakes, rivers and the sea. This initiative sends out a clear signal that we can achieve more together. Since the foundation of the EU, known at the time as the EEC, it has never become more important that we close ranks at all levels of the EU. The current coronavirus pandemic has shown us one thing very clear. Only together we are strong. If we succeed in establishing intelligent and excellent research across the European research area, preserving the freedom of science and involving our citizens, our successes in research will multiply. This will allow us not only to better manage the current crisis, but to emerge stronger than before. Europe needs strong research. In this spirit, I wish you all interesting discussions and inspiring insights. So thank you very much, uh, Minister Karliczek. I think many uh, overlaps with um, uh, Maria Gabriel's vision, linking education, 
citizens um, having research and innovation driving a Green Deal industrial agenda. Many, many overlaps. And I, I would like to say that I'm here very clearly seeing that the German presidency will not only make a difference on Horizon Europe, it will also drive the European research area strongly forward. And then hand over to the Portuguese presidency. Uh, Manuel Eitor, can I now hand over to you? Manuel, over to you. Thank you very much, Enrique, and it is a great privilege to be with you, and particularly with Maria Gabriel in this session, among all the other. Um, the European research area has become probably the most clever world network of a set of diversified platforms for collaborative research. And more and more, we look at this as an inclusive way of promoting the participation of, or at large of every single researcher in Europe in a joint and, and common um, in effort. Um, in order to make this and to engage citizens at large, we do believe there are three main needs. First, to strengthen the relationships between science, employment and resilience, and particularly facing the current crisis we are particularly aware of, we need to promote employment, and particularly in collaboration with research and innovation throughout Europe in all our joint and national recovery plans. This, this um, linkage between research and new and the creation of new and better employment will be a shared goal throughout Europe. Second is we have learned over the last 30 to 40 years that the new frontiers of knowledge are only achieved through collaborative research. The first photographs of the black holes or the space um, adventures or even promoting better treatments for cancer or decrease the impact of um, mental diseases can only be achieved through collaborative research. And therefore, the European research area is the tool for Europe to excel and to promote a better quality of life through the new frontiers of, um, of knowledge, which again do require a collective um, um, effort. So let me thank um, and uh, share Maria Gabriel's views on the three I's, the three P's and the three C's, and particularly in the time we face of increasing uncertainty. We need to understand that the pandemic and the, the um, um, SARS-2 um, virus has become a result of an increasing unbalance between human activity at large and our um, planet Earth. Therefore, to provide a better balance, we need and we require a revisited notion of the anthropogenic so that we can really understand a sustainable world, a more green world, through the advantage of the digitalization of our economies. And it is clear for all of us that then can only be achieved with more research and innovation, creating better jobs, and essentially giving a place for researchers in Europe. We need better and more research careers in every single region across Europe. And that is also the role of the European research area, to bring researchers to build, I will say and conclude with this, networks of opportunities for everyone across every single zone of Europe. Thank you. Minister Aito, thank you very much. Uh, two, two points I would like to briefly just pick up. The first one is the connection you were making with the recovery. It is very true that the European research area needs to be recovery relevant. And at the same time, I think also important that member states use the resources of uh, the recovery plan uh, to make then best use of this uh, research. And the second dimension is, is research careers. You mentioned them already, uh, Maria. This is very much at the, at the heart of the, D it's the DNA of the European research area. But I think we need to bring this to the next level. And uh, bringing the European research area home, uh, Minister Kustas, will be your responsibility as Slovenian presidency. So over to you. Yes, thank you very much. Good afternoon to all of you from Rainy Ljubljana. 
uh, dear Commissioner Gabriel, dear President of the Committee of the Regions, dear ministers, dear all the other listeners to our meeting today. Uh, I think that I will just continue with uh, uh, additional fourth a that uh, already uh, Commissioner Gabriel emphasized, and I would add to uh, her three additional one, and this one is called interconnection. And speaking about interconnection, I'm speaking about the need to interconnect the regions, stakeholders, researchers, their careers and mobility, infrastructures, and knowledge in all forms and all directions. So it is in the structure and the process of creation and implementation of excellent knowledge for solutions of the societal and also authority type of the problems. What more can be done? I think that the commissioner has just laid out a brilliant menu of the most pertinent objectives and areas where we have to do more and better. We need to focus more on smart directionality. We owe this to our researchers. And coming to the focus of our Slovenian presidency, for European research area, the focus will not be only on the what, but more on the how. How to cross-fertilize research and industrial policy how to link to the European higher education area and how to position research and innovation in the center of all other policies. For the new European research area to deliver, to facilitate recovery and enable the green and digital transition, we will need to set up an effective, modern, intersectoral governance. So, Go, coming back or uh, going further on, we already have the first key ingredients in place. And this is a strong partnership of the trio of Germany, Portugal and Slovenia together with the Commission. Among other elements, I see as the key in future of European research area governance and the ones that I would like to mention. The following. The first one, the stakeholders. European research area is mostly for them and they know best what works and what doesn't. Secondly, political ownership. All institutions have to take more decisive role in future European research area governance, but also they and we need to take more responsibility in this regard. Thirdly, the bigger picture, European semester, recovery and resi resilience plans, strategic planning, missions, partnerships, industrial ecosystems, national reforms should be governed more coherently. These cannot be stand alone concepts and processes or European research area will never really work. And finally, the evidences. All policy decisions should be based on firm and objective evidence, but research and innovation must champion in this regard. Therefore, the new European research area governance must rely on constant monitoring, feeding into adjustment on all levels when and where necessary, and further on also to the evaluation of the impacts that we are going to achieve with these kind of approaches. And of course, we should be aiming higher with European research area. If we are determined and join forces, we can do wonders as the incredible achievements of two of my fellow Slovenians today, Pogacar and Primo Roglic at Tour de France has shown all of us to the all, not only Europe, not only France, not only Slovenia, but but to the whole world uh, this past weekend. I wish all of us a very fruitful and challenging meeting and work in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister.
What a tour de France indeed, I, I must say. Um, this was absolutely amazing. Um, no, thank you very much and, and, and thanks for also uh, underlining the, the need to look at the governance and at the ownership, uh, the double ownership, the one of research and innovation across an entire government or across the Commission as you are doing, Maria, but then the ownership of the reforms by member states which then need to be delivered. This is uh, indeed um, one of the challenges or the nuts which we need to crack together to make the European research area really move to the next level. We have now uh, a few minutes and we are joined by Marco Marcula, um, the former president of the Committee of the Regions. Marco, welcome for a short uh, discussion uh, on the basis of questions which come from, uh, from the audience. So let me have a quick look um, and see. I, I like the second one. Um, maybe I can try the second one. Um, and... Yeah, the first and the second are not bad. Huh? Uh, shall I try? Do you, would you have a, a one which you prefer, uh, Maria? The second one. The second one. Let's go for the second one. What specific measures could we collectively deploy uh, to um, increase citizens' trust in science and research? I think that's really, a, it couldn't be a more topical question. This looked very positive at the beginning of the pandemic, more challenging now. And maybe that's a good question for all of you. So we have uh, only three minutes left. So maybe in a nutshell, uh, starting uh, uh, Marco with you citizens and trust, and then I would move to uh, Minister Hayter, Mr. Kustas, and then, Maria, you would close. Okay, uh, let me start uh, uh, very brief. So, it's a very good question. It links very much uh, what you already have said, so here about the painting, this brilliant menu. And uh, uh, let me add to that, uh, Madam Commissioner, you had the nice uh, uh, five or uh, three I's and three P's and three C's. So let me add to those so that uh, maybe in I's, so innovation is always the good one because that brings good results. Then we need to have uh, what uh, Minister Kustero, Kustek already said, so interconnection, but instead of that, maybe involvement and industry with the P's to build this and how do we can get to its more public, uh, private and partnerships. And then with the uh, C's, uh, definitely commitment and especially when I, and I look at it from the uh, Committee of the Regional Cities perspective, so we need to tackle climate. Climate is another C and then collaboration with the Committee of the Region. So we are very committed on making these uh, things to happen and uh, you have painted very good frame for that. Thank you. Thank you. M Mr. Hayter. Thank you very much again. Let me focus on challenges for Europe. And I believe m for making this very pragmatic and direct to focus on the five research and innovation missions and how far can we, can we couple these with the recovery plan and their implementation in every single member states. If we look at cancer, the ultimate goal to make sure that by 2030, three out of four cancer patients do have a long-term uh, perspective of, um, of living. And therefore, how can we achieve a research and clinical um, system together in, in order essentially to in, in, in increase the quality of life throughout Europe and decrease the mortality by cancer. Certainly, when we look at our cities, the way to provoke a number of cities with low um, CO2 emission um, levels in the way that we can Im improve uh, mobility, but also the way to use modern digital technologies to all citizens in the urban concentrations will be a key issue also to achieve that, um, uh, that goal. In the oceans, we can and should certainly focus on plastics and the way um, we address the um, um, waste uh, material oh, wait, in ma our... Ma ma Manuel, Manuel, vous m'entendez? Minister, we, we have only 40 seconds left altogether. 
Okay, so uh, let me also focus on the food protection and on the climate. But certainly, if we look at the way we can design the research missions in Horizon Europe, we will look at the future of Europe at large. Thank you very much, Minister. Mr. Kustas. Yes, actually, you said the crucial and key question about uh, the trust and citizens' trust in science. Uh, I think that this is a kind of a long track, track run. We uh, rarely have immediate results of the scientific world, uh, and therefore we need to be patient. Uh, coming to these concrete circumstances of nowadays, we need to wait, we need to be patient, and we need to trust that we are going to get the vaccine for COVID-19, that we are going to... Um, uh, be aware of the fact that our behavior towards um, everyday life is has been changing over these uh, uh, these experiences of nowadays, and all of this uh, will be addressed by and is, it is already being addressed by our scientists. But we just need to give them enough time and uh, enough space uh, to be creative and to find the solutions for all of us to live in a better world in the future. So, I will answer to the question too, because thanks to all your valuable contribution, we can at least identify some important elements, because trust in science, that means for me, leading by example. That means that we should continue initiatives like science at school, because the role of education here is vital. To pay attention to our boys, but to our girls too. Trust, that means leading by example for our researchers, that they have an attractive careers, that our researchers, our innovation ecosystems, our regions, we can offer them possibilities to make science and to transform the results of our science into tangible results and benefits for our citizens. Trust, that means that together with our member states, when we decide to have an ambitious target, that means that we make all our possible to have at our disposal instruments in order to achieve them. Of course, to preserve excellence at the heart of our project of the European research area, but to continue to invest in a very targeted manner, to allow access to excellence, to continue to build world-class infrastructures, to have interconnections. Thank you very much, Minister Kostas, for insisting so much on this. I fully agree. And together, to talk about co-leadership and co-ownership. Because I think that trust, that means that we are able to take together the decisions, to, make common, to have a common vision, but after, together, to tackle the different challenges and difficulties by working together to offer common solutions. That means a lot of work. That means, at the same time, a lot of perspectives for us. So, thank you very much for giving us hope, because what we have seen during this panel, it's a very strong message for the next presidencies, from the German, the actual one, the Portugal, Portuguese and Slovenia. That's very important. At the same time, I'm so glad that the regional dimension it's one of the main assets that we have. It's time to turn this into a concrete benefit. So thank you very much for your contributions. And yeah, it's up to us to make this time, the European research area, a truly European one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
uh, over 50% of 